Every spring, large flocks of dark-colored, long-necked birds make their way across North America, double-crested cormorants. Due to their distinctive shape, these birds are easy to identify in the marshes and lakes that they inhabit. However, there's another cormorant species that occasionally makes its way north from Central and South America that looks incredibly similar to the double-crested cormorant, the Neotropic cormorant. Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Badgerland Birding, and today we're looking at ID tips to help you separate the Neotropic cormorant from the double-crested cormorant. In most places in the United States, the Neotropic cormorant is fairly rare, so it pays to know what to look for when these two species are flocking together in order to find a rare bird. So let's get into it. The first thing to look for is size and shape. Neotropic cormorants are shorter and sleeker than double-crested cormorants, with a length ranging between 63.5 and 68.5 centimeters, compared to the 70 to 90 centimeter length of the double-crested cormorant. The wingspans of these birds are also considerably different, with the neotropic cormorant having an average wingspan of 102 centimeters, compared to the 114 to 123 centimeter range of the double-crested cormorant. In addition to this basic size difference, the neotropic cormorant's tail will appear longer compared to the body than that of the double-crested cormorant. These characteristics are most noticeable in flight when directly compared to other cormorants, but can also be seen when birds are perched. Of course, size can be difficult to determine in the field, especially when there are no other birds around for comparison. Fortunately, there are some field markings you can also look at to differentiate these two species. First, note the lures just above the bill on the double-crested cormorant. Both juveniles and adults display yellow to orange colored lures, while the lures on the neotropic cormorant are much darker. When comparing these two next to each other, there's actually a noticeable difference. Another important area to note on these birds is the gular, which is essentially the upper throat. Both species have orange or yellowish gulars, but the shape is different for each bird. If you look carefully, you can see the neotropic cormorant has a gular that angles toward the bill in an acute angle. The gular on the double-crested cormorant angles far less and in many instances makes more of a 90 degree angle. We aren't quite done talking about the gular yet though. Another field mark bird is regularly used to distinguish these species is the white triangular marking that lines the gular on the neotropic cormorant. It's very obvious in adults, but less visible in juveniles. It can be difficult to make a positive ID on these two species based solely on one characteristic. That's why it's best to look at all field markings. As a whole, a neotropic cormorant will have a smaller, sleeker stature, a longer tail compared to its body, dark lures, a gular that acutely angles toward the bill, and a white triangular marking around the gular. The double-crested cormorant will be larger and blockier, with a shorter, stubbier tail, brightly colored lures, a gular that is less angled near the mouth, and no white triangular mark around the gular. I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe for more ID tips, and we'll see you next time. Or like, this is a G2. <laughs> this is. Yeah. We walked all the way around Patrick Marsh, kind of waiting for the cormorants to come back. And it looks like we have one out here that has the elongated tail, looks like it's a small size. I think we might have our neotropic, which would be amazing if that's true, because it seemed like there was no hope for a while of finding it.